Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Thursday. It's September 15th, and we're wrapping up another week. Uh, just a reminder: no chart, uh, no chart lessons on Fridays. Uh, I've stopped doing them on Fridays. Uh, we may start back one day, but for now, I'm kind of enjoying uh, getting a day off during the week. Uh, I like to come in on Friday, especially in the summertime, and uh, get through trading early and hit the golf course or go spend some time with. Uh, my family are doing something I enjoy doing just to get out of here. It gets old. It really gets old sitting at the uh, in front of a screen five, six, seven hours a day every day for years. So um, you'll get there one day. If you're a newbie, you're probably all excited and want to get in front of the screen as much as you can. And, and you need to do that. But uh, at some point, your mind needs a break and your body needs a break and you just need to get away from it. So uh, that's what I'm trying to do. But anyway... Uh, let's go over our chart lesson today. It looked like it was going to be a ra uh, range day early on, but man, this thing, uh, it was definitely a two-tiered channel early, but we went flat, really flat right across here. But uh, once it bounced off that trend line again, it was all uphill, and we really didn't turn down until we got to the top, and even then, we were headed back up again. Um, so it looked like there was a break here. There was a close outside. But the market didn't care. It just kept going higher. And really, I mean, it helped having the bigger two-tiered channel. But really, all you needed was this shorter-term stuff to keep you right on track here. So, um, yeah, really nice day. Uh, I mean, it was real. Once we got past here, it was pretty obvious we were headed higher. It looked like it was going to try to make its new high here in reverse. But, you know, that's why we draw our shorter-term stuff. And it bounced and just kept going higher. So um, let's back out, talk about the trades, and we'll wrap this week up. So let's talk about the first trades. When I came in, we uh, had this nice trend working up here. We had a close outside and a move to a new high, and then it reversed. Uh, there's a nice second entry long right here. Um, it actually went lower first and then turned up and went out the upper side. So just put your, you know, just put a buy stop right there and... You got enough room to get out before the highs, and it doesn't matter because it's probably going to make a new high here anyway, which it does, and then it instantly turns down. So uh, you notice how bearish that bar is, how far away it is from the EMA. This is really close to being red, and you could argue for it to be red, but it's right there uh, on the borderline. So, uh, but notice that there's, you've got your trend line working up, you got a uh, very convincing close outside and then two legs to a new high. So uh, that's a good trade right there. It's a little bit aggressive just because it could turn down and push up one more time, but I really liked it, and um, I think it's very close to being red. And if you caught this trade, look at it. I mean, that's a sure runner all the way down here. And you just draw this trend line down, you get a close outside, you make a new low, and you get a reversal bar right here. You're a good bit away from the EMA, so you're probably coming back. And that's where you want to exit, somewhere right in there. Probably either on a break above that bar or a break above that. If you just rode this down and you exited the first bar that made a new high, you would have gotten out right here within four or five ticks of the low. And that's a nice ride down. So you only have to catch a couple of those each day, and you're making money. Uh, pretty good money on the, you know, a single runner there. So... That's actually about, I would say, the entry here was, well, let's just look at it. Maybe we'll look at it. Yeah, for whatever reason, it's not giving me my data. Uh, but that's right around 224 there. And if you'd exit right in here, just say 216. So, you know, it's an easy eight points I guess so right around eight points and um, if you take this bounce here you didn't get a runner on this one because it pulled back before it went higher here again you you could probably argue for this one to be blue really this is where your your, your true signal bar so it's too bearish um, so you could play it off this one what you'd want to do is let it break above and then put your stop back where it was and see you see if you could get feeling you could have and it would have come back right here uh even 
probably wouldn't have filled you here because it didn't tick through it, so it wouldn't have probably filled a lemon order. But you might have even got filled here. But if not, um, this one, the reason I made it green and not blue is it's you got a little double top here, and it's right into the EMA. So I was a little bit leery of this one. Uh, okay, I had a slight interruption there. But, yeah, uh, the reason this one's green and not blue, I still like the trade, but I'm less I, – this one's closer to being blue than this one. Really, in this case, your best bet is to wait on the reversal, which comes here. Notice it pushes right through the EMA strongly, pulls back, gives you that failed second entry short, and then goes – higher again. I really thought this one would take on off. Uh, it was an easy scout, but you didn't get anything more than that. So uh, it didn't matter what your signal bar looked like here uh, because it's uh, it's bearish. And if, you know, if it comes all the way back up there and breaks above that big a bearish bar, that's usually a pretty good sign. So like I said, I was a little surprised that um, this one didn't take on off. I mean, but that's your true reversal pattern. But it just ends up being a trap to the long side. Uh, I don't think you can go short here, being that close to the EMA. But notice what happens. It pulls back down, bounces. And this this one, even though there's no close outside that second swing there, this is probably more like this. I probably had it a little too... You really just don't have enough bars there. You need at least three bars, and you do have three bars there. Um, but usually you want to use those first couple of swings, like right here. There's there's your first swing, and there's your start. So there's your first two swings. Uh, here would be these two. So that's the reason I use that. But the fact that it bounced off that trend line and confirmed it right there, that's your third touch. And that's a fairly bullish bar. It's a second entry long. Uh, it's a higher low than this one. So I like that one. Again, I thought it would take on off here, but it doesn't. Um, I was a little bit more hesitant of this one. It's kind of a repeat pattern to here. It's fairly bullish bar. So, I mean, really, I probably should at least mark it green. It's another bounce off the trend line. And a lot of times I like to add on to these, but the fact that we got that double top there and we're still below the EMA, it concerned me a little bit. And you can see what happened. It still worked, but it does pull back again. And so you got to be concerned about that. It's tempting to go short here, but I, even though it would have worked, I wouldn't even go short because you got this trend line working up. And um, you get a second entry here, but I think you're better off to wait because this thing is just not acting right. Uh, but when it makes a higher low and turns back up right there, I like getting on with it. Um, and really, you could almost argue for this one to be another green one. Um, but again, I think you're better off to wait and see if you get a little uh, second entry counting off this low here and you get that right here and then it takes off finally. But even then, it's still finding resistance up there. Uh, it pulls back to the trend line again. And there's a second entry long right there, but you definitely don't want to take that one um, because you just had your break. Uh, even though that's going to look like a trap and I wouldn't ride it back either. I would just wait on this one. Um, see what happens but when it bounces off that trend line I like it um, especially when you get this inside bar that's fairly bullish and finally it takes off um, there's a second there's a this is like a little breakout pullback long from across here across these highs and it's a real small bar it is off that trend line working up that shorter term trend line but we just had a break of this one and now we got a new high so it's a little and they're not back to the EMA so it's a little risky but it's such a small bar it's low risk I think there's maybe three or four ticks there uh, so you might consider that one I definitely wouldn't take this one you're getting back up here to the highs you're right into the highs and uh, it would have worked but you see it pulls back and you don't know that it's you know you don't know that you're going to get the enough ticks there so you got to play the rules and just go with the odds and the odds are against you there so and of course it's just going sideways here so I don't like doing anything until you get that failed break lower and this is like a confluence area it's a failed break lower it confirms this shorter term trend line uh, on the way up to the upper side here uh, there's plenty of room to get out here then it pulls back here and this is like a little reversal pattern uh, you might be a little concerned with this, but generally a lot of times when you catch these lows, 
you know, just like way down here, you know, I showed you a couple of them yesterday, these failed break lowers, like a lot of times you catch the low of the day, and if you caught that, you have a nice run here. So that's the reason I marked that one. This one is, you could argue that that's a little aggressive, taking that one that into those highs. So it really is right at the borderline. Uh, if it had ticked back and made it created a trap, it's still somewhat of a trap, but if it would have ticked back, I would have liked it better. But if you know what's going on here, if you understand what's going on, you figure it's going higher there. Um, and notice how it gaps over. There's that gap right there. It's over a, a midline and a sideways support and resistance. And I talk about that a lot, and people will say it doesn't mean anything, but it's there all the time, so keep an eye on it. Uh, of course, we're moving up here. We're not quite to the high as you get a break. So uh, you're th I'm thinking at this time we're probably going to jump uh, jump up and touch this and turn down, but it pushes through. But guess what? We had this overshoot here, so it doesn't surprise me to get about an equal overshoot up here because the market moves. There's, market geometry is real, and they're equal moves, and you'll see that a lot. So, uh, But that's a second entry long. It's a double test of this level right here. Uh, a couple of different reasons I like that one. There's not a lot of room to get out here, but with that double test, the fact that we're not up to this high yet, uh, and we're not up to this high either, we're probably headed there. This is a pretty strong trend up since, I mean, it really started trending up just before the open, and it hadn't stopped yet. So um, you got a good idea where your target is. So I like it. Um, you might let it break higher and use a limit order to get a little better entry, and you could have. You could have gotten back in this one a, ball, or a tick or two and give you a little more room to get out before that high. And, of course, we overshoot it. There's a, there's a new high, pull back first entry, pull back second entry. But we're coming off this high, so I don't like that second entry right there. I think you're better off to wait and see if you get a better uh you need to get something confirmed going this way. And you finally get it right here, but even then, you're just kind of going sideways a little bit. Um, and it does make a double top, a bearish bar. And, but we don't have a break of this trend line yet. Even though we're coming off this high, these highs up here, we don't have a break of this yet. So it's a little bit risky if you can get in with enough room to get down here. So And you could have gotten in you know, maybe a tick or so back into this signal bar, and it would have worked either way. And then, of course, it pulls back and gives you a double test, too, but still, we don't have a break of that trend line. I'm willing to give it a green one, but it's pretty risky. Uh, you probably, by the time it's tried three times, that's that double test rule, you're probably going to trap some people, and we're really looking for it to go lower anyway. So that's why I like this one. Even though that's a, not a great signal bar, it's a double test rule. It's a failed second entry long. Actually, the failed second entry long is here. This is just basically the double test of this high right here. Uh, and this turned out to be a pretty good trade. But again, you know, if you're not following the rules, you can get burned. So I, I've got to make that one green. So based on, you know, if you saw what I was talking about there, then you're probably okay. Um, and then you... You get a, a little bit of an overshoot. It really doesn't close outside the trend line, but, you, but you've had a break in a new low. We're not that far away from the EMA, so I don't think you want to go long. But here's your reversal pattern. Look, it pushes through, pulls back, gives you a first entry. But then all of a sudden it turns. It actually went lower before it went higher. So you really needed that extra failed to the high side before it comes back. Um, that's kind of complicated. Let me let me back up and talk about that again. Um, you want to see it fail to go lower twice, but you want to see it break higher twice as well, if that makes sense. But uh, I don't want to really complicate it and confuse you. But it, it anyway, it makes it maybe to make it easier. It makes a new low here before it went higher. So you don't really have a failed second entry long until it goes higher here. And then you would have had one right here, but now you're back above the EMA, and um, you actually made a new low here, so that kind of confuses it. So I think you're better off to wait, and then, so notice your new low. Now you got a first entry, you go higher, and you get a failed second entry, and look at that bullish bar. I like going long right there. 
uh, your stop has to, this is really your signal bar, your stop has to go below it. So this is the one we're actually using the brake above. So that's the reason uh, I've got it listed as a signal bar. But your stop always has to go below the swing low or above the swing high. So your stop still goes below the big red bar right there. Hope that makes sense. That one's a little confusing, but hopefully you see what I'm saying. You got a new low here, so really you had to start your count over. And then so there's your first entry short, your second entry short, and your bullish bar, and everything's above the MA. And that turns out to be another great trade with a runner. And if you just rode that up until you got your first close outside a bar outside of that, that's right there. Um, even if you just rode it up to the first break below a previous bar, you would have gotten several points out of it. So what I like waiting till you get a close outside here and then a break below. So that would have been probably right here. I would have exited. And that got you into the afternoon. I, it, you know, there's actually another pull back to the trend line right here, but it's right into, it's right into the upper trend channel line. So there's too big a chance it touches and goes lower. Um, and then there's a second entry long here when we're looking for a new high, but again, it's right into that main trend line. It would have worked again, but it's so late in the day, I just don't recommend that one. So, a uh, really nice day. If you only caught a couple of these easier to see trades, you had some really good runners. It's pretty much all uphill. It was a little questionable early on. It looked like it might be a range day. But once we bounced off this trend line right here again, it was all uphill from there on. So, really nice day but anyway I'm gonna wrap it up for today uh, I'm trying to uh, get done a little bit earlier um, since um, I'm trying to catch up so I'm spending more time in the office and I'm trying to get these done a little earlier uh, until I get busy again I'll try to do them earlier I can't guarantee you that I'll always have them done by four or five o'clock each day but that's gonna be my goal going forward here uh, at least in the short term but um, Anyway, it's hard to believe I was gone a week and already been back a week. It just I don't know where the time goes, but uh, when you're busy, it flies. So uh, it's been a really fast week for me. Uh, good week, though. I hope it's been a good week for you. We'll be back again to do it Monday, uh, but I'm out here for the week. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.